Okay, welcome back to Forest Fens Gold, my Wonderlust YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to do, I want to try and just keep this succinct. I think this is like take five. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to quickly talk about um, the Bible. So um, just real quickly, it's Luke uh, 1940. Um, it's from the parable of Luke. It says, the stones would immediately cry out, I tell you, if these become silent, the stones will cry out. If these should hold their peace, the stones which lie before you will cry out. That is, God would raise up some still more unlikely instruments to declare his praise, for the power of God will not return empty. So, why are we talking about Luke 1940, that the stones would immediately cry out? Because... And I understand, and I don't want to get into a whole diatribe going on and on about, you know, the story is is that, uh, you know, Jesus comes to this town and that, um, you know, he's saying that it's not literal, but, you know, I mean, they're using it as a metaphor for um, that dead men or stones, that they would rise up. And so... What um the topic I'm talking about today, I guess I'll put this back, is about war. And Forrest Fenn, you know, fought in Vietnam. And my little take on this, um, and this could just be a giant rabbit hole upon a rabbit hole, but I just think it's an interesting sideways thought about it, um, is that um, Forrest Fenn does tell us that in Vietnam he was shot down. And he was shot down, um, I believe in Laos, in the jungle. And he was there overnight, right? He was there for one night. And he had he made a decision and the decision was he had a radio and he called for help and the helicopter came the next day and they picked him up and he was saved and he went home and lived the rest of his life and he was able to see his kids and his family again and he talks about in the story he talks about how he had a decision and the decision was that he could go on this uh he could go hike down, and he was saying something about it could take two or three weeks up to a month for him to hike through this dense jungle, you know, with all sorts of perils, but it would be a heck of a story and great, great adventure, and I'm wondering if part of the thrill of the chase is maybe that this whole thing about leaving his bones and the treasure out there, it could be having something to do with that he made this binary decision in his life. It was an extreme moment, you know, where he had a choice that he could either go hike down, you know, through this jungle and live and survive and make this amazing thing, or he could call for help. And I'm wondering if that that has, there's something about that in the thrill of the chase where he put this thing. Um, is the thrill of the chase the continuation of that other binary side of the story, or is it an ode to that moment in his life where he's telling us in all these stories about all his life that he lived, all these things that he's done, you know, before war and after and in between. And what he's saying is, is that I really need to can put myself back in this place because maybe, I don't know, there's a little bit of guilt about it or he's basically saying, maybe not guilt, but he's saying maybe this is where I belong, you know, in the end, you know, that's okay. So that's kind of a wild detail. Um, so that being said, I'm making kind of a huge jump here. And so this is where we're going to jump to. Okay, so what we're going to jump to is we're jumping to the <laughs> Google Maps. And what we're going to do is, and i got to go as fast as possible to fix this all in because there's a bunch of stuff. So, um, and this could be Rabbit Hole City. I don't know. But the thing that's interesting is, and I'm giving away a bunch of stuff, and these are like solve ideas, and this could be the right solve. I don't know. But here's the thing I think is kind of interesting. If you look at the map, right, and it just messed up again, even after practicing it. If you go from Santa Fe, and you go to Denver, okay, and then you go to this spot, and then I draw this down here, what do I get? Well, I don't know about you, but it looks like a blaze. It looks like a horse's blaze. And I'm almost wondering if I'm a terrible drawer that um, what we're looking for is this is something like I can't draw. Um, this is my horse. <laughs> Oops. It's kind of wrong. Anyways, so this is an idea I've had for a long time. And that is that um, 
<laughs> it looks really silly, but uh, that the blaze is on a horse's nose, and somehow on the map you have to draw a horse's head. Okay, and did you ever notice that if you look at the picture of Forrest Fenn, he wears that silly hat, right? And it almost looks like a cow or a horse. Okay, let's move away from that. Let me clear all this. Okay, so anyways, it's Denver, and here's Santa Fe, right? And so I'm just, I'm not even going to explain the reason why, but if you head up this highway into this valley, let's see if I can get this to zoom without crashing, we get to the Rio Grande National Forest, and there's this little curve in the road, and you take this dirt road up, and you go to, it's called Sergeant's Mesa, and if you zoom in further, it's about a nine-mile dirt road trip, a 3,000-foot uh, increase uh, in elevation, and you come up to this dirt road, and there's a parking area, and you park right here. And then you, one would walk, you park here, and you walk over to this little terry scant of trees. And if you walk over, if we walk over these trees, this is what we'll see. Um, there is a mem war memorial here, and this is the only um, video I have of it, and here it is. Um, this is the war memorial. It's called Soldier Stone, and it's up here in the middle of a national forest. It is not marked. Um, it has the name Vietnam, sacrifice, still in death lies everyone, and the battle's lost. Courage, Laos, and a lot of the terms are in Vietnamese, or in Laotian, or in Cambodian. If I weep, if by weeping I could change the course of events, my tears would pour down ceaselessly for a thousand autumns. And I want to tell you something. I'm definitely kind of a very patriotic guy about America, history, and uh, soldiers. And I get all choked up when I, like, this is like the fourth or five, fifth time I've had to do this video. And a couple of times I had to just stop the video because, like, I'm, like, all choked up. I can't even talk. I had to, like, go get a drink of water. Um, anyways, the appointed time to be born, to die, to love, to hate, of war, for peace. Let's continue this on here. And you see bullets, valor. So other soldiers, people have left bullets. Honor. Cambodia. Soldier Stone. Vietnam. And you see the rock. Um, and then scattered all around this memorial on the ground are stones and in the the inscriptions are in foreign languages they are in Vietnamese Laotian Cambodian I think there's one in French and in this video some of them are quite far away I've heard that there are or over time more and more stones keep like appearing and um, if you see, she has to walk quite a ways away from this thing. Um, I think this looks like it's in French. And I mean, there, oh, there it is. That's a good 50 feet. 40 feet? Yeah, that looks like Vietnamese. Indian Division, Vietnam, 1945. Vietnamese proverb. So you know what I'm thinking here. Um, I want to get to the point where she gets to the one. A lonely grave died for France, Indochina, 1945. And I did sort of chop this video up um, to make it faster because I don't have all the time in the world. Flowers from hell. And eventually she'll get to the one that I want. 
Anyways, you can see that this thing is sitting in the trees like this. Um, it's out of focus. I'm trying to get to the point where she gets to the one where... Okay, so yeah, here it is. I'll stop this video right here. So, um, Luke, 1940, Cambodia, 1975. And there kind of comes full circle to my point that I originally started about is that um, the proverb Luke basically is saying that if these stones, you know, were soldiers, and I just think it's telling that, you know, that, you know, we put stones in the place for these people, and, you know, they represent real people, um, you know, people who lived. So, a um, couple of things about this whole idea that are good and bad in regards to the thrill of the chase. I also thought it was cool doing a video coming up. I mean, it's still a few more weeks, but Memorial Day weekend's coming up. And this is kind of ahead of that, but okay, my ode to that. So yeah, it's hard to put a happy face on this story with that, you know, being like perky happy about it. Um, by the way, this Chinese, this Vietnamese proverb means generally loosely interpreted. It says to those who are not present. So, so one of the biggest problems with this as a solve. Well, first of all, it does fit a lot of the things that we would want, I would want, if I was going to hide a treasure chest. I mean, this thing is remote. It's hard to get to. It's, I wouldn't say it's hard to get to, but it is a pain. I mean, from, I showed you on the map, from Denver or Santa Fe, it's it's a good three hour, three and a half hour drive just to the bottom of that hill. And then that's another, it's, uh, as far as the crow flies are going up that dirt road, it's about 10 miles up a dirt road with lots of switchbacks, um, it's not for the meek or the faint of heart, you know, to get up there, it is, and then you have to get all the way back in a day, and then another thing that's kind of crazy or interesting about this is that the, I don't know if I said it before, but the Continental Divide, like, goes right out here across, on the other side of this field, which one could maybe interpret as where warm water is hauled, and if you look at this field, I mean, a football field, this is about the distance, well, it's more than... This is at least a football field, maybe more out here. Again, rabbit hole city, right? You know, um, another thing that's a major problem. So I had to switch this over to my topo maps. And so here is the location we're talking about. It's like right here, right? And it's in this group of trees. And then here's this grassy area that we were looking at in the other picture, kind of looking this way. Um, and here is this, the Continental Divide, I believe, runs, like, through there somehow. The Continental Divide, I think, is, like, through there. And it's part of the Continental Divide Trail. Um, but here in lies one of the deeper problems. The deeper problem is, when you look at the topo map, this location, which is right here, is 11,600 feet. Um, the only other thing, and again, I'm... You know, you start trying to make the site fit your solve. Um, here's the Continental Divide. The interesting thing is that this, uh, these trails, there is another trail that comes down here. And the only other thing that I can think of, and I'm just, um, you know, grasping for straws at this solve, but it is interesting that there, this is not very far to walk from here. And there's actually a trail that goes down around here. And it does drop to 10,400 feet, and this is called Dead Man's Creek. And it's weird that the elevation right here is 10, exactly, or uh, it's like 10,200 feet. Um, and it does that in a few different directions, too. I mean, I have another, had another idea that, you know, if you follow along this Continental Divide out here, um, it does get down and there's this cutoff, and it takes you down the other side, and it does reach 10,200 feet. Um, and another solve I have, too, is if you go around this way, um, you to this Bear Creek, um, it's 10,200 feet. And the only thing I could think of is that did Forrest Fenn want to be close to this um, memorial? So, hey, the, cut this short here, and thanks for watching.